Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian and Jack with Simple Men's Comics. So the CW has a crisis on Infinite Earths crossover between all their television shows. And in this video, we're going to give you five back issues that you can be on the lookout for that will tie into that specific event, starting with Green Arrow number 24. Now, what's the importance of this book, Jack? Well, Brian, this is the first time Jeff Lemire brought John Diggle, the popular character from the Arrow TV show, into the comics universe. And John Diggle has been the right-hand man of Oliver Queen throughout the show. Uh, this is the final season of Arrow on the CW. But we know that there's some more shows on the horizon, one of which being a Green Lantern show. We don't know any details about that, but what we do know from the Elseworlds crossover on the CW is that on other Earths, John Diggle is referred to as John Diggle Stewart, his full name. So there's a lot of speculation that we could be seeing with all this different infinite Earths. John Diggle wearing that Green Lantern ring at some point. We'll have to see how that plays out. But for that reason, I really think that that Green Arrow 24, a book that really is only selling for a few dollars, is a great buy right now. So where did they come up with the name John Diggle anyways? Do you know? Well, I believe it's actually inspired by the artist on the series, Andy Diggle. Right. That was always something that, I won't say blew my mind, but it's always a nice little Easter egg to have in your back pocket that some people aren't aware of. And then at number four, we get the new Teen Titans annual. All right, and this is the first appearance of Lila Michaels, who is, of course, the wife of John Diggle, who has been an integral part of the whole series Arrow and some of the crossovers as she is the leader of Argus. But also with this Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, we know that she has been kind of at the right hand of the Monitor, preparing our heroes for battle against the upcoming Crisis. Uh, at Crisis on Infinite Earths number one, the original crossover series, we see her become her hero character Harbinger, we don't know if we're going to see that on the CW, but New Teen Titans Annual is absolutely a stealth buy, a book that's oftentimes found in bins. Then at number three, this is kind of a bigger book. We got Crisis on Infinite Earths number eight. Pretty epic event that goes on in this book, huh, Jack? Absolutely, and the cover is iconic, as this is the death of Barry Allen. And since the Flash TV show has premiered on the CW Network, we have seen first Reverse Flash and then the Flash himself. Looking into the future at this future article written by Iris West Allen, talking about his impending death in crisis. And this has kind of plagued Barry, having this whole event loom in his future. And with last week's episode, we know that this is coming right with crisis. But what Barry doesn't know is that it looks like Oliver is working something behind the scenes to possibly save all of the heroes, with the exception of himself, which makes sense as Arrow is coming to a conclusion after this season. So my kind of uh, estimation is that we're going to see Oliver take the place of Barry in this event. Either way, I would not be surprised to see some sort of homage to this famous cover and this famous event at some point in this crossover speaking of coming to a conclusion have you seen that S Stephen amell is in promo school for wwe right now yes which is surprising because he's a partner with many of the aew guys uh most recently on the a little bit of the bubbly chris jericho wine with his wine company knocking point wine so very interesting to see him double dip it on both sides. <laughs> then at number two, we get GI Combat number 274. This is what? The first appearance of the Monitor? First appearance of the Monitor, who has loomed large over the last season or so, appearing on almost every CW show. Uh, he has been putting some of our heroes through tests to see if they are ready for the impending crisis. He has been viewed as a villain and has now kind of made that face turn where the, the – the, to quote wrestling reference again, where our heroes seem to now have faith and trust in him that he is just – everything that he's done, everything he's put them through, it has really just been to prepare them for what is impending. Um, and his first appearance is one that kind of isn't well known, 
Um, it, his counterpart, the Anti-Monitor, tends to be a more well-known first appearance, but the Monitor has been a, a large role within the series. I think he's going to play a huge role in the crossover. And this is a book that, while it sells for about $20, is one that a lot of people probably aren't aware of and probably could be found a good bit cheaper than that at shows and in back issue bins. Then at number one, we get DCU Brave New World number one. Now, this isn't an Aladdin book, which is what I thought at first. No, this is the first appearance of Ryan Choi, The Atom. Now, The Atom has been appearing throughout the CW series, originally getting making his debut in Arrow and then moving into Legends of Tomorrow. But Brandon Routh, who plays The Atom, is moving on after this season looking to take some kind of other opportunities. And this gives a perfect opportunity for DC to bring in another Adam. So Ryan Choi will be making his debut in this crisis crossover event. We have yet to see him show up on the small screen, but we know that he is coming from set pictures. And this book is a kind of completely under the radar book. It's one that will be oftentimes found in bins. It's actually kind of a tough find because it's such kind of a not sought after first appearance. But we know that Ryan Choi is going to be most likely here to stay beyond the crossover event. So it's one that could see rise in value over time. So there it is. Those are five back issues to be on the lookout for that crossover with that Crisis on Infinite Earths. I like these books because if you've read Crisis on Infinite Earths but you want a little bit more backstory, these are fantastic books to be on the lookout for. And they're not super expensive. Right, Jack? No, they're, they're really not. This, this series, while a absolute classic, is one that's been kind of undervalued for some time. It got a little bit of heat when we first teased Crisis on season one of Flash, but since then – it's kind of lingered. So, I mean, this is a Marv Wolfman, George Perez classic series that I think every collector should own a Crisis on Infinite Earth set in their collection. I think it's one of those kind of staple sets. Just like Marvel has the Infinity Gauntlet, this is kind of the DC version of that. I mean, Absolutely. George Perez, right? But right. Also, let us know in the comments, do you have any of these books? Are these books you're on the lookout for? I know there's some people out there that just aren't fans of Crisis on Infinite Earths. And that's okay, too, because that's what makes the hobby great. Either way, this is Brian and Jack from Superman's Comics. And be on the lookout for our next back issue video.